Hey, hey HCDA and welcome back to Satisfactory. I'm back from my holiday and I'm really excited to do some more stuff for you. And well, today we are going to do quite a few interesting things. Um, first of all, we are going to have to unlock the next tier in our uh, elevator. Um, that's actually not here. Look at me being completely confused after a holiday. Um, that's over here, of course. We are going to have to drop the automated wiring into this seal and... Oh man, this is so satisfying when you do this. Hello, hello. Oh, it actually needs to the progress there for a moment. And then it goes boom. Right? Right? Oh, yes. Okay, that, that that's just so satisfying to look at. Okay, so now that that's actually done, uh, let's see. We unlocked quite a few new different things that we can do. Uh, oil processing for one. Um, that's going to be messy from the looks of it with plastic, rubber, fuel. Uh, there's less like four or five different new items, or at least products that we can make. Industrial manufacturing is going to be really fun. The manufacturer is going to allow us to make some more complex products. Computers among them, modular engines and adaptive control units, which apparently are also things we are going to need for our phase three. We get some alternative fluid transport, which, I don't know, looks interesting. So apparently we can package all the liquids and then transport them the old fashioned way through belts, I suppose. I'm not entirely sure if we're going to need this. Probably the answer is yes. Uh, but yeah, we'll find out soon enough. We also have a gas mask so we can finally get around those nasty little gas areas and maybe even retrieve the crates that we um, put in the starting area in the first few episodes when I kept dying trying to get it back. Uh, what else do we have? Expanded power infrastructure. So a fuel generator that goes along with this one, right? We were able to make fuel over here. Yep. So a new way to make fuel. Better belts are always interesting. And for some reason we also get a scanner update for Caterium, which we already have. So that's, I don't know. A jetpack. Yay, a jetpack. We're going to need fuel. We're going to need motors. We're going to need a ton of stuff actually for this. But that should be doable and interesting. What else? Um, we also have a monorail train technology. Interesting. Um, let me see, the jetpack is actually really interesting. What do we need for that? We need package fuel. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and we need rubber and we need plastic. So it, fe it feels like this is one of the first things we should go for. Well, we also need motors, but we can already make those, I believe. Um, then we also get trains and we get better pipes. So, mm, interesting. I'm not entirely sure. I've seen a lot of other people using trains. And I have to say, I'm not yet convinced, but... First things first, we're going to have to do a few other things. Because before we can start to unlock all that, we have to solve a pretty pre big problem. Problem? Pretty big problem. My language uh, center apparently de-evolved while I was on holiday. Uh, because we have an issue with power, we can turn it on. But it will also turn off right away. We have a maximum consumption of 1500 almost. And we can only produce about 1200. So we're going to have to fix that and well this is going to be only a temporary solution of course but this is going to fix the problem for now so we have some batteries over here just just because um i'm not entirely sure if they're actually charging or not um it seems they are charging and discharging at the same time uh, we are actually producing slightly more than what we're consuming for the moment so like you see you can see we are very close to actually consuming max capacity uh, and we have some biomass burners to fill the gap. So for now, this will work, but this is definitely not going to uh, be viable to keep this up long term. So we are going to have to revisit our coal plant and see if we can upgrade that a bit. Remember this beauty? It's uh, one of the first things we've built in this playthrough. One of the first larger things, at least, we built in this playthrough. And I still really like this one, but this is nowhere near sufficient to power our current. Uh, well, it's actually pretty close to <laughs> close to efficient in terms of um, supplying all the power we need. But if we want to expand any further than this, we are going to need a ton more power. So I think we are going to take this idea, but then scale it up. So what I've done before, which you, which you can see on the left and right over here with these water pumps, I was overclocking the water pumps so that I had exactly 1.5 per 
um, row of coal plants. So for each coal plant, of, no, sorry, for each four coal plants, you need 1.5 water pumps at normal speed. So buffing those up to 1.5 speed by uh, overclocking them, uh, this is basically exactly one water pump overclocked, in this case, for each row of four factories. Now, I thought about this a little bit further, and actually overclocking the water pump seems like a very inefficient way to use overclocking. Instead, what I should have done is overclock the coal, because there's plenty of water, so there's no reason to overclock the water production over here, but there's a limit to how much coal we have. And if we overclock the miners, uh, and we have Mark II miners now, we should be able to make 180, I believe, um, coal per um, mine. So we can make a total of 720 coal, because there's actually four coal um, patches in the back over here. Those are all, all normal coal patches, so nothing too spectacular, but there's four of them. Uh, so 720 coal... Um, at 150% speed, that is. That it should supply us with enough coal for 48 coal plants. And if we then attach 18 water pumps to that, then we should have enough for a pretty massive facility. So currently we have a total of 16 coal plants. So we're going to pump that up to 48. Now that does mean that um, I could go the boring way. And just basically add a few more rows of this. But to be honest, like I said, that's going to be a very boring way. And although I kind of like this setup, I mean, it's pretty efficient. I'm going to do a similar setup, but just make it look a bit, a little bit more pretty. I also kind of wanted to take it out of the land over there. Uh, although you could actually make it in the middle of there. That should, could be just fine. Um, I can actually imagine a coal plant to the back of the wall there. That could be really interesting. But right now, I think we, what we could also do is kind of build it on the water over here. And if we lift it off from the water a little bit, then we kind of put the pumps underneath. We can have the coal plants on top of that. And I think that should be pretty interesting and nice to look at. So I'm going to go and set that up. But in the meanwhile, I'm still going to leave this facility in the back running. Um, right now, my entire production facility is up and running we're producing things like tickets um so there's no reason to take out the power until we actually need it but i am going to take out this old power plant once we finish the new one i'm also going to build the new power plants to the world grid because we've started doing that and this current build is actually not built to the world grid just yet it's just aligned to the beach there's nothing wrong with that per se but i do like the idea of building everything in my world to the world grid uh, just to make sure we can keep it very nice and organized. Now, I started building it over here. And before I forget to mention this, there's going to be a lot of jump cuts in this. Because it will take me quite a long time to build this. And you don't want to look at me placing down hundreds of foundations. Fiddling around with belts and things like that. Uh, but I'm going to show you every step in between. So you still have an idea what you're doing in case you want to uh, reproduce it. Um, and in the meanwhile, if you're still here by now, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video and the channel if you can. If you want, of course, that will definitely help me out. Now, uh, also a question for you guys for the comments. Is it normal that creatures spawn in the middle of your factory and get stuck in there? Because our little friend Bob over here uh, is not having a good time in between these coal plants. Um, and I'm pretty sure that when I actually built this, I mean, you can't build through creatures anyway. So he was walking around just fine before. But for some reason, he's now stuck in here. And every time I visit here, it makes me a little sad to see him stuck. Um, so, yeah, I started in the middle. Um, I actually also started, if we jump down, there's this whole big rock thing sticking out on the beach. Um, so I kind of aligned my uh, level where I'm going to build the factories, or at least part of it, with that. Um... Just for the reason that this also seems to be sort of the middle of this area. And that makes sure that we have it nice and aligned to the sides. Now it is off the floor and currently it's floating in the air. We're going to fix that. Um, but this will leave a nice amount of room for the um, water pumps as well. Now I'm actually not sure if we're going to build at this level completely. But at least this makes um, kind of the center of our facility. Now let's add some more foundations to this. 
Now this is definitely a few more foundations and I actually when I did the math I think I made a mistake initially and this is the this is based on my initial math but I don't actually think this is even enough foundations just yet. Um, in terms of length we can easily fit 12 of these um, coal plants in a row but that means we need four rows of if, if you count this as a row. Um, in the length of this uh, foundations, then we are going to need four of those rows of coal plants in order to get our total of 48 coal facilities. Now, we are also going to have to fit the um, water pumps in here somewhere. And I actually think that if I'm looking at the height of this, as you can see, I can still see these power pump of these uh, water pumps over here. So I actually think we have to move everything up a bit so once again i'm going to fiddle around with these uh, foundations a bit and skip right to the end result and there we go it only took me like 45 minutes to build this uh, and this being a uh, a platform that's actually a little bit higher you can still see the original platform underneath but we are now over without any clipping over the uh, water pumps that we already have over there i also added in all the coal facilities apparently i made this mistake in my math somewhere i'm really rusty after my holiday it seems um and um yeah so we actually have way more space in the front here than we actually need we can put that to use for sure um because that means we can make the entrance look really good um but yeah we will definitely have to work on making things look a lot better like i said it took me like 45 minutes to build this so there's a definitely a reason that we have these jump kits in here because this build is i already know this it's going to take me way longer than i thought it was going to be uh i actually started this episode thinking well i'll just build some power and then we'll get on with something else but i have a feeling this is going to be a complete build in itself Anyway, um, currently everything is still floating, like you can see over here. I definitely want to fix that. I do believe that building giant factories in the sky is, although it's really efficient and you don't have to worry about the landscape getting in the way and stuff like that, I just don't, that's just not my style. I kind of like building in the area that we're given, uh, in the way that I think the developers intended this game to be played. Uh, of course, if you want to build your sky fortress, by all means do so. Um, it's just not my thing. So I'm going to try to make this look a bit realistic and in the same sense I actually think it might be interesting to make a side entrance over there. You have this uh, whole uh, ramp over here that we use to travel back and forth to our facility, our main hub. Um, so it, it, I think it might make sense to have a side entrance over there somewhere. Um, what else to say uh, other than the fact that I have to really get back to work because we have so much to do. Okay, I worked all day on this and it is now night and we have a side entrance over there. We also have some walkways and I removed all the extra foundations that we had up front. I also moved all the original foundations that were underneath and I moved the uh, entrance or at least the, the bottom level to almost equal to the water level Now that looks really nice at least i think it looks really nice if we're going to put the pumps next to that it does mean we have this awkward situation going on here with this uh, rock that we'll have to figure out at some point but for now i think it looks just fine we have this nice little stairs over here and i also removed all the foundations in the middle so we now have this beautiful walkway through in the middle um, with like half a foundation worth of sp uh, space on each side now it also means that we have a walkway through the middle, so we have an easier way to put power poles there, and we have another walkway on the sides all the way, all the way around the facility, and we have a gap over here that I think we should be able to fit the um, elevators as well, or sorry, the lifts as well as the um, um, pipes through. Um, and all in all, I think this looks really nice. It really has this big industrial feel to it. We have it all over the water. So all in all, I'm really liking how this is shaping up. Now you might be wondering how you make a centered walkway like this. So let me quickly show you how to do that. Here we are slightly back in time before I actually built this. So let me quickly rebuild it once again. Uh, we start with placing down a, a small foundation underneath where we the level where we actually want to be. Then we are going to find a road barrier. It might be 
possible to do this in a different way, but this is the way I used. And the road barrier is very flexible where you place it. So I'm, we're going to place it right on the edge of the lower foundations over here. Now, the nice thing about the walkways is that they actually connect straight to the um, other one. Uh, assuming we can actually get to that side. So if we cheat there for a moment and do that like this. And there we go. As you can see, we can now connect connect the walkway through to that. We can remove all of this. We can also remove the road barrier. And now we have this little walkway floating in the middle of nowhere. And we can use, simply use that to build whatever we want. And there you go. Now, of course, if you have the first one up and running, all you need to do is place everything down easily and you have this centralized walkway. So the road barriers are actually really um, convenient, I found, to basically connect everything in an angle that you want to connect it to because they uh, everything will almost, well, maybe not everything, but a lot of things will actually snap to the road barrier in such a way that you can um, offset things a little bit. So for example, what you can also do is set down a road barrier like this like in the middle of our foundation, which is the uh, the important thing here, then we can build a wall. And then we can actually snap the wall to that as well. Now my controls are a little bit wonky. I'm not entirely sure why that is. So sorry for all the bouncing around. But there we go. Now we have a wall set on the middle of our foundation. Well, normally it will only connect to the sides. So this really allows you to be a little bit more creative in where you put your walls, where you put your walkways, etc, etc. Now let's get on with the build. Okay, so it's starting to look like something now. We have the four belts that we'll need incoming from the four different coal patches. It needs to be marked three belts because we are going to have 180 coal per belt. Uh, it's actually really convenient that we have exactly the amount of coal facilities for each belt. So that's, that means that we have uh, no overflow on any belt whatsoever. Everything should be going into a coal facility. We also have the first two uh, pumps over here that are connecting to a pipe that goes all the way around as you can see. And the reason that I've done that is we are going to need four and a half water pumps for each of these rows of um, coal facilities. And of course, with that one half is going to be a problem. So we can either underclock or overclock in order to fix that. Or we can simply put nine pumps on this pipe and have that be enough for the actual entire two rows. On top of that, it kind of looks cool. So that's a pretty important bonus as well there. Now, that does mean we do have to kind of think about where we're going to place these pumps in terms of spacing because we do want the actual water to run in the correct direction. Um, and there's also only going to go, uh, there's only so much that can actually fit into a pipe. I do have to say in terms of throughput, I'm kind of surprised that we still only have Mark 1 pipes. I know we have Mark 2 pipes coming up at the end of this phase. But to be honest, that's quite late considering the amount of water we need in order to fuel this. But uh, we'll have to work with it. I also put down a... Um, it's going to be annoying to get around. There we go. Um, a conveyor over here. So as you can see, I was kind of fiddling around with where to place the conveyors and the pipes. And I think this is probably the best way to do that. Uh, side note, I kind of like the whole wiggly thing we have going on here from the pumps to the uh, pipes. I could, of course, angle this a little bit more so it's more direct, but actually I kind of like how this looks. Um, but yeah, the lifts are pretty straightforward. We do have the pipes running over this, and it's actually, this kind of gives the um, visibility that the pipes are running on top of the um, splitters. They're actually kind of resting on top of there, as you can see. Now, that does mean that we cannot place any... Um, um, supports over here because if we do that then they're going to clip through the belt and that's of course not going to look very realistic alternatively we can use these pipeline supports to kind of uh, show the supporting air, um, part of these pipes but to be honest I think we probably are not going to need a lot of that because all of these splitters are going to do that job for us um, what else now actually I did remove the stairs to the ground level mainly because we have this whole rock thing going on over here so now we kind of enter a little more higher level with the pumps being kind of the um, the basement so to speak 
Now, when it comes to the actual conveyors and um, pipes over here, we will have to kind of figure out whether to whether we can fit that in over here. Because in the middle, we actually have more room on the sides, as you can see over here, to have these kind of next to each other. But we have more limited room on the sides. Now, this is going to be an interesting challenge to see if we can make this fit. Turns out the answer is yes and no. Yes in the sense that we can actually fit in the pipes in between here without any problem. There's no clipping going on over here. But of course the conveyors stick out a little bit further, or at least the, um, the lifts do. Now actually, um, I, I'm i kind of getting into the whole having things clip in this game. Although that's kind of against my nature in most games. Um, but to be honest, it doesn't look too bad. It kind of looks like the railing over here is like attached to this thing. On this side, it's actually right next to it. So, all in all, it, it doesn't look all that bad, I think. There's some clipping going on over here. But if you don't look too closely at it, you could actually think this is intentional. It's kind of resting on top of the walkway, things like that. You could actually think that this walkway is meant for the uh, maintenance of these lifts. So, all in all, I kind of like that. Now, I did go all the way and make sure that we have all the other pipes set up as well. It looks cool, don't you think? Uh, all the lifts are over there as well and we also have some batteries over here why i don't know just because we can we are going to be over producing power a lot initially so there is now 10 batteries five on each side that we can store quite a bit of power in case we have any power spikes at some point um, in the future we also have this whole pump situation going on over here and by the way i'm loving the fact that we can just jump on top of these things with the blade runners now um, but there we go, we have the um, pumps all away, all across the entire pipe and they are spread out in such a way that they should be able to keep up the maximum um, water flow all the time. Now I do actually think that we should be able to uh, lift up the water all the way to the top but we are also going to need to connect these belts so we are far from done yet although we do have the key infrastructure up and running now now in terms of actually powering up this new facility um there's a few things to note apparently our current power consumption is so low that we can actually take out half of this facility connect this up to our new facility make sure that we have all the coal and water going on one half then um that basically then basically this half of the facility has been powered up then we can take, can take down the other half of our current coal uh, facility and then charge up the other half of our own facility that's a really efficient way to do that if um i wouldn't have such a low consumption at the moment because everything in my main base is stacked up not everything but at least a couple of things are um the simple way would be to temporarily just disconnect the power to my main base. So we only have this power line going up here. So if we sever one connection there, then we have no more power to the entire base. And then we can just set this up, maybe set in some temporary power or something, and then um, kind of uh, kickstart that. And once it's running, it should be self-sufficient so we can connect it back to the power grid. Now, um, that's actually more work than it sounds like, because actually tearing down this facility is going to take us quite a bit of work. Um, but we also need to revisit our shop, I think, because we definitely want to make this look pretty. Although, to be honest, it kind of looks pretty good as already, I think, in terms of how industrial this looks. But I do want to experiment a little bit more with all the um, things from the awesome shop in terms of um, walls and things like that in order to kind of make this look better. We do have quite a few tickets waiting for us considering we've been spending several hours building this already. So that should definitely mean that, for example, all the course production that we have funneling into a uh, sink and things like that should actually be supplying um, us with a lot of tickets. Now, the fact that my power consumption is so low does mean that we have a lot of production going to waste, or at least a lot of potential production going to waste because it's currently full, uh, storage is full, and it's not going to going off to a sink. Now that's actually a different problem that I might want to revisit in the next episode. But for now, I think um, we should be able to start building and make this look pretty. Alright, and there we are. We are halfway through setting everything up. And 
I just really want to comment for a moment on how awesome these batteries look when they're discharging. Also, apparently I removed one by accident, so that's not good. We'll have to uh, put that back in place. Let's see, that should go right over there in the middle. And then with a little power connection to that. There you go. And you can now start discharging as well, but you have no power. However, if we connect the power over there, that should mean that everything in the back starts working. We should have coal coming in in a moment. And then we can actually connect back up the other half of our facility as well to the other half of the belts. Now we have the belts ready over here. What I actually did with the other belts was kind of put them um, coming in from the sides. I do think that looks really nice and pretty. And hopefully we'll have coal arriving here sometime soon. And then we can get on with the um, other half of our facility. So meanwhile, Bob is still stuck in the, uh, the old construction, so we'll also get a chance to go and free him. Well, we have the entire facility up and running, and even Bob has come out to take a look at it. Are you impressed, Bob? Yes, I think you are. Don't step on me. Um, we have the coal coming in from this side now. We have coal coming in from the other side with kind of um, parallel running... Um, what do you call these buses, I suppose? There's, it's not really worth the name of a bus when there's only two belts. But um, yeah, um, I do think it looks really nice with all these belts on the sides of this uh, little platform. I did move it back up um, so we have an easy way to get inside our facility. Our um, batteries are completely charged now and we do have everything up and running. Now you can see that the pumps are struggling a little bit in terms of actually pumping. They are placed in such a way that they are kind of a max supply all the time. Honestly, I do believe that if we get a chance to upgrade these um, pipes to Mark II at some point, that might actually have the facility run a little bit smoother. Um, you can also see some of the lights blinking on, on top with the uh, coal factories, and that has everything to do with the fact that we are kind of making our build a little bit more complex than it needs to be because we have coal coming in um, from one side and we have water coming in from the other side and that means that we have two endpoints on both sides and endpoints are typically where for example this one on the uh, far left that turned red for a moment there will sometimes struggle actually coming online because either it's lacking water or the one on the far side might be lacking a little bit of coal now there is actually an easy way to at least mostly fix this and that is turn off the facility for a little while while we still have the belts in place so that the belts can completely stack up and then the water can also completely stack up and then if you turn it back on in theory if we balanced everything correctly and i think we did that should at least remove a part of that problem assuming that the water is working like we want it to because especially the water is a little bit finicky sometimes in which direction it moves and the placement of the pumps doesn't help with that so we have and potentially a problem there but that's that's one way of fixing that now um the facility is still i mean it's functional although it's still partially floating in the air um but let's make this look really pretty with all those tickets that we have now i am going to fiddle around with walls a lot i am going to fiddle around with some roofs with some windows etc etc that's probably going to take me another few hours so i won't bother you with that whole process but let's take a look at the end result and where once was a large coal facility, there is now nothing more than a tower that I forgot to remove and a lot of incoming belts with coal. Now you can see we also put some roofs over the entrance. I'll show you that in a moment up more close. But I also kind of like this whole roof that we have going on over here on top of our coal facility. Now I intentionally did not make this a closed roof for two reasons. First of all, we'll actually get to look at this roof a lot of the time because over there is our uh, slope that we use to travel to our main facility, as you can see. But of course, we also have this coal plant with a lot of um, smoke coming out of that. And I think it's kind of realistic to have this whole open-ended uh, roof on top of this, just to keep the fauna out and um, the smoke all going out of the facility as well. Now, let's jump down and take a closer look at the actual facility itself. Ta-da! I have to say this is probably not the most impressive facility ever built, 
but I do think this is definitely a giant step up from what we've been building so far. So we have this kind of roofing going on here that makes sure our batteries are kept dry. Uh, we also have nice glass walls. I had some fun with the painted beams and some concrete walling to make these uh, lightning bolts over there on the sides to really depict that this is a power facility. And there's probably smarter ways to go about that, but um, yeah, I kind of like that. Now actually I did use the offset trick for my walls as well. I just think it looks a lot more neat when the walls are kind of offset from the sides, especially when they're in the water like this. So that looks really cool and the fact that we have glass walls actually allows us to kind of peek inside our facility from the outside without it all being one giant box. Now I also kind of like the detail that we have going on over here with this uh, kind of air hole on the sides. Once again, I think that's kind of realistic when it comes to the coal facilities that are, that are inside. Just make sure that it uh, stays breathable, breathable in there. Um, for the same reason, we actually have this giant open area on the front as well. Once again, I just kind of like how that looks. But all in all, it's really cool. Now, uh, actually, there's a ladder on the side there that I forgot to remove. But we'll do that after we take a look on the inside. Now, I had to kind of fiddle around with the whole roofing situation over here because I actually made it initially in such a way that we weren't able to actually access this stairs anymore. Now, inside, nothing really changed other than the fact that I did place down a lot of power poles in order to connect everything up. Um, yeah, we also have Mark II power poles now as well, although we didn't use them too much. I really like the fact that we can kind of look outside and look at the beautiful waterfalls that we have on the side. Uh, I think there's actually some creatures running around somewhere over there as well. Now what I don't really like about this game is that we still have all the leaves blowing in. Although we could argue that maybe the leaves are blowing in from the actual leaves that are in the facility. Uh, due to the fact that part of the rocks are coming inside. And of course we have an open area. And apparently I forgot a little piece of roof over there. Ooh, that's so annoying. Anyway, I'll fix that later as well. Um, the last thing I do want to show you is that we have this nice side entrance over here. And once again, I really like the fact that because of all the glass to be fused, that the entire facility is really light as well. Um, there's an, an intentional gap in the glass to get in the power cable over there. Um, what I also really like is the fact that we've now used a little bit more space to build everything. Also, I used the different uh, foundations, if you hadn't noticed yet. They look a lot more clean than the original ones. And this just makes it so much easier to move around your facility. It makes it look really clean. It doesn't make it look like an actual facility without being too cramped. Now, we have this nice little side entrance, and that means that whenever we take a little stroll back to our main facility, we can take a nice, whoa, whoa, whoa. We can take a nice little look from the side of our facility and I do think it looks really good from pretty much every angle that we can take a look at it now. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Uh, does this look any good? Is this an improvement over what we've built so far? Uh, is it normal that I spent like, I don't know, 10, 11 hours on building this? It's actually a surprising long time to spend on one single power facility. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if I'm proud of that. But yeah, it's what it is. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments. Make sure you like the video if you actually like this facility as well. I hope you enjoyed this kind of walkthrough on how I built this, how this came to be. And in the next episode, don't forget to join in because I want to talk about different approaches to the game compared to maybe how I've played so far and maybe what's optimal and what's not. But that's for next time. I hope you enjoyed this one and I will catch you in the next one.